Hi, I'm Matt Korosnuff, and today I'm going to show you how the Drupal Geddon SQL injection uh, vulnerability works. This vulnerability was present in every version of Drupal 7 prior to uh, version 7.32. It was also present in Drupal 8 Beta 1. Uh, here I have a site running version 7.31, so let's get started. Uh, so as you probably know, the vulnerability was present in uh, database.inc, which is part of the uh, part of Drupal that allows Drupal to interact with uh, MySQL data databases primarily. And as you also may know, the uh, primary vul vulnerability was in this variable right here on line uh, 739, this, uh, this incrementer value. Uh, and I'll explain in more detail what this is used for, but uh, to make a long story short, this i value uh, is a u is in some cases a user input which is never sanitized. So this input uh, will uh, can can be used by uh, someone filling out a form to pass SQL directly into the database without first uh, having any access checking. So uh, let, me, let me show you how that works. Now the, f the first thing to understand is that anytime any form submission occurs in Drupal, form values will be received on the back end via HTTP POST using the PHP uh, POST superglobal variable. And here we see we have an array of values, it's an associative array, and the keys in this associative array, name and pass, uh, are the name attribute uh, here in our HTML. So name equals name, and then name equals pass. So name and pass become the array keys in our PHP post variable. Now there's some circumstances where you wouldn't just want to pass an associative array of strings to uh, to Drupal. You would in fact uh, want to pass a multi-dimensional array. One example of that is on the user edit form. Password has two values. Password is going to be passed into HTTP POST as an array. And the way that's, that's done is simply by making your name attribute pass bracket pass1. And then the second occurrence of the password field is bracket pass2. So we'll put our breakpoint back in. and submit this form and we can see here in HTTP POST we have an array inside the existing POST array. Now the, the problem with this from Drupal's perspective is that you there's, there's no good way to pass an array into a MySQL query. So this, uh, these values need to at some point be collapsed down into a comma separated list of arguments. And that's what this expand arguments function is for. Um, and it, it works fine for most purposes. The, the problem is that this pass1 and pass2 value is just going to be is just going to be trusted without any sanitization. Uh, and those values, unfortunately, are user inputs, and they can be controlled by, on, the, on the client side. Uh, so if you, if you know what to change where, you can inject pretty much any SQL you want using this unsanitized input. Uh, so let's inject some SQL right now. I'll show you how it works. 
uh, this, this hack is actually incredibly easy to accomplish. I'm going to put our breakpoint back in and I'm going to set a condition this time so we don't break on every database statement. This is very, very easy to do, unfortunately. Uh, all we need to do is make a second version of this input. The second version of this input will make bracket zero. First version is where we'll put our SQL. This syntax took me a while to figure out, but it's ultimately not really hard at all. So first we'll put a semicolon. Semicolon will terminate the real query, the query Drupal is trying to run. Uh, and then we'll put uh, we'll put our query. Uh, and then you need two semicolons. I don't know why it's two. I've never been able to figure that out. Um, but one one fails. Uh, and then anything remaining in the actual query that Drupal is trying to run, we want to silence. So we put an SQL comment marker and then two spaces. And that's all we have to do to inject our SQL. It's actually frighteningly simple. Uh, so if I show you here is my, my flood table. Flood table is used to track uh, uh, failed login attempts and lock uh, uh, brute force attempts at, out, of, uh, out of Drupal. I'll put admin admin and I'll put an incorrect password. And you can see what's happened here is the array key that I'm passing in to, ex to expand arguments. Expand arguments is expecting this i value to just be some integer. In reality, it's going to be uh, a, a string of SQL. So if we step through this, you can see that uh, Drupal's going to concatenate my array key that I just typed myself uh, with, uh, with the, the original key and pass, pass that directly into the database. And this is really where the da this line here, line 755, is really where the damage happens. You can see the query that we were preparing to run, so we were going to select from the users table. What's supposed to happen on this line is this colon name token is replaced with the actual uh, actual value of uh, of the name that was submitted to to Drupal. What's at what's going to happen now because we've placed SQL in that line is we're going to select from users where name equals just this meaningless nothing and then we're going to run another statement we're going to delete from flood and then all the all the rest of this is just a, is just commented out it doesn't doesn't mean anything um, so let's let that run now of course executing this for me it does, means nothing you you get an error and you're not able to log in um, but our SQL has run. We just cleared our flood table. We uh, we have two new entries because we just tried to tried to log in unsuccessfully, um, and and of course, unfortunately, because Drupal has the SQL database at at its very heart, being able to inject any SQL you want gives you a tremendous amount of power and allows you to do practically anything to a Drupal website. In my next video, I'll show you what this, uh, what this hack actually looks like in the wild and how you can guard against it.